Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Uh, it's a, it's an awesome uh, awesome story for for the region for for many reasons. Uh, what's what's the impact of this story? Tell us what what's the impact of Karim as Karim itself, and then what does it mean for this acquisition uh, or change of owners? I want to call it from uh, from us, the originals, to the new group. What what's going to happen now? And what's what is going to, what is going to what is that going to do to the ecosystem, in your view? So, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, all of you, uh, for having uh, you know been our supporters and partners and funders on the journey. Um, I think more than anything, Karim is. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have happened at all without uh, the ecosystem. And it's an early ecosystem, but it is an ecosystem because uh, we could not have done it ourselves. So, uh, so thank you. And, uh, and particularly Fadi, uh, the grandfather of all startups, uh, including Kareem. Uh, thank you. Um, so what happens now? So I think um, some of you might have heard the story, and I won't you know, spend too much time on it. On it but we started Kareem um, seven years ago on the first day of Ramadan in 2012, because we wanted to build something meaningful and big. That was, the, that was always what we cared about. And that then turned into Kareem. We want to simplify and, improve, simplify and improve the lives of people in the region. We want to build an awesome organization that inspires the region. We happened to start with transportation, because that was something we, we didn't know how it worked, but we knew the pain of not having transportation, obviously, as a business traveler. So we started there. But it was never about transportation. Um, and we kept building and transportation became uh, in more countries and then it's become food delivery and early signs of, of other new services. So for us, this, this deal, while I think the world thinks that it's, uh, it's a big deal, for us it's, uh, it's chapter two. It's not an end of a story, it's not an end of a book, it is really turning page from chapter one to chapter two. So for us, this means that um, we have a, a very strong partner and a backer uh, in Uber um, that will help us uh, further pursue our, uh, our purpose, which still remains exactly the same, to simplify and improve the lives of people in the region, um, and to pursue our platform vision. So, you know, over the last, um, really when we started our last fundraising about a year ago, this was really selling the story that we are not going to be a ride hailing company anymore. The opportunity is much bigger. We want to go out. We think that we have built some of the ingredients that it takes to become a platform company. We have a brand. We have a tech platform. We have an opera operational footprint across 120 cities in, in 15 countries. That takes a lot of pain to build it. You built it in Aramex, even bigger, of course. Um, and we have people. So with this, we can do more. Uh, and um, as we started, Talking to investors about this story, um, we actually found that Uber will be the, the strongest partner to do this together with. So, so, f so for Karim's point of view, I, I would say nothing changes other than we now feel emboldened to accelerate. So uh, we're going to run even faster in chapter two. For the region, um, I, um, I'm very excited. Um, I feel that this will put um, the region even more on the map. Um, you know, when we have gone over the years to seek money outside, you still have to pitch the, the region pretty hard. It's not, uh, it's not a given for, for international investors to invest here. So, um, you know, with the Souk thing happening, with the, what that happened, property finder happened, big investment, and, and now us, I think the world is going to pay a bit more attention. So this is great. And the second thing that happened is uh, some of our amazing investors and partners over the years will get some liquidity. Uh, and, uh, you know, we all hope that that will come right back into the, into the ecosystem. There are exits in yes, the region. Yes, exactly. Right? So we will come right back into the ecosystem um, and even excite even more LPs and investors that, man, you can, you can actually invest not just for doing good, but you can, you can make money. You can start that. investing also. I hope so. <laughs> So yeah, so I think you know Mudasser, he used to talk or he talks about this as a, as a lift off moment for the region. Um, there has been many big moments in the region already in, in the startup ecosystem, but hopefully this will be one of them. This is the ecosystem 2.0. Yeah, I hope so.
some of your i heard uh, maybe you don't want to talk about it but uh, one of your early captains is celebrating big time now from stock options <laughs> uh, i think there is not uh, we didn't give unfortunately we we, we didn't give um, stock options to captains because this they might be uh, did you pay him uh, in in shares instead of uh, <laughs> but, but th- there are there are amazing stories um, of uh, early colleagues um pe- the first couple of colleagues in our call center uh interns that came for three months and and helped us open a new market and uh, we literally gave someone some stock options on a piece of on a napkin in a restaurant yes. and said yeah, yeah whatever take this and, and you're uh, honoring those right of course yeah. so so tell us what's beyond right hailing uh, i mean what t- 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 talk to us about the platform what what should we as users as clients as karim lovers expect from you guys so um so we start with with mobility um in people mobility we are literally just scratching the surface we think that we are s- serving or even addressing about two percent of the demand in the region uh, because our normal ride hailing product you sitting in a in a person with a private captain is an expensive proposition for 98 percent of the people even if you make the car smaller and smaller and smaller you turn it into a tuk-tuk you turn it into a motorcycle you add in pooling you put four people on a motorcycle it's still an expensive product so we want to really go after the the mass opportunity for uh, people mobility we have started this by a pilot in egypt uh, where we do buses uh, and this is Uh, people are loving it it's picking up and already. it's picking up massively uh, we estimates say that about 40% of the um, population in in Egypt uh, is not even served whatsoever with any public transport infrastructure so this is the first stage to sort of really go after um, people mobility we think this is a hundred million dollar market in the region alone now beyond that uh, we are looking at delivery we have gone into food food delivery particularly as a starting point and we can talk a lot about that and then we have gone into to payment we all know and i think everyone you're a natural for payments yeah everyone that that operates in the region i think we are still more than 90% of our transactions are on cash 90% okay? yes that's, more than that's why yeah so um that's a massive opportunity as well and uh, we are now blessed to have the scale that we can we already have a a transaction relationship with our customers and our captains so i think we're in a good position to 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 turn something into that so we have launched carrying pay anyone that has a green map you can send money to the person sitting, sitting next to you and it shows up in the next uh, few minutes so far you can only use it to book carrying rides but the next step obviously once we get the proper licenses is that you can use it to actually pay stuff so we're going to expect what we see in in Asians have been ahead of us in this so we're going to expect that we will sit on the carrying go into the carrying app and never leave right yeah that's what we're hoping yes <laughs> that's what we're hoping exactly um and and i think um, since we're sitting here among investors i have to tell my investor pitch some of you might have heard it uh, we told every single investor the same story our region is so awesome from morocco to pakistan turkey to sudan 700 million people we're talking about almost 10% of the world population average age is like 25 so people are young which means that they're willing to change their behaviors fast and adopt new things smartphone penetration is 45 50% higher than china in the gcc it's ha- more than 100% everyone has two phones as you know so this is like a super exciting market consumer spending people buying stuff is about 2 trillion dollars today 2% of that is online 2% that's 40 billion dollars which means that kareem alone is a significant part of the overall online spending in the region which is sad in a decade let's call it vision 2030 um that 2 trillion has grown to 3 trillion because of demographics and if that 2% online can go to 15 20% which is the case in most other places of the world including developing markets then that's a half a trillion dollar online opportunity half a trillion dollar annual spending online and if you become if you look anywhere in the world there is typically a couple of players that have the lion's share of this whether you're amazon and you have what is it 60% plus of e-commerce or you're in alibaba or whoever you are you don't have to become the winner but if you become one of the three or four winners 
you're creating a hundred billion dollar business in the region. Easy. In the next decade. So the question is who's gonna be the we hope that we will, you know, we're not done. So that's still yeah. the goal. Absolutely. And and tell us about how, I know you had regulatory issues with governments. Initially they've they've been more proactive now. So where, where where does that get you specifically on payments and other things? I mean, how is the relationship with the government? How are they interacting with you now? So I think when we started, um, this whole industry was was obviously completely new. Are you a transportation company? Are you a tech company? Are you something in between? And and this happened the same globally. Every all the governments were trying to figure out, or all the regulators regulators were trying to figure out how should we, should we regulate you. But pretty quickly, um, the governments and the regulators across the region, they, they figured this out and, and were quite pioneering. You know, we were we, RTA in Dubai, Transat in Abu Dhabi, the PTA in Saudi, Egypt, Jordan. So now this has all happened and, and you know, alhamdulillah, we're in a good spot. And not just that, we are actually excited about some of our partnerships that are even doing a global first. So for example, End of last year, we announced the, the partnership with RTA, which is a PPP, private-public partnership, where we're going to jointly set up, a, we set up a JV, and we're going to operate all the taxes on behalf of, of, um, of RTA. This is a global first, where a government uh, you know, partners at that deeply with the private sector company to operate public infrastructure. And it's amazing. So, I mean, you know, we are very blessed to have wonderful relationships. Now, as we go into pay, that's a different set of regulators. That's uh, central banks, etc. And we're having very positive dialogues in most of our countries, because again, uh, I've been. This has been my talking. I, this has been, this has been my, my yeah. thesis for. They're definitely interested in talking, and my thesis have been all the time. If you're a, if you're in the if you're in Silicon Valley, unless you unless you're disrupting something, you are not sexy. You're not investable. Unless you're disrupting the taxi business, you're disrupting something. No one is going to invest in it. In the region, there is not much to disrupt to begin with. <laughs> you just need to enable. And the governments have realized that tech companies like Kareem and others can actually help enable new stuff. For example, jobs. We have created more than a million jobs in the region. A million job opportunities for captains to make a living, to put their kids How through many, school. You have a million captains now? A million, a million registered. Not all of them are operating on the platform at this point of view, but more than a million has been registered. In Saudi, we have 75,000 Saudi captains, which is more than what Aramco is, has employees. Now, similarly for payments, when people don't have access, then they cannot be part of the of the they cannot be economically productive. So if people don't have access to transportation, women couldn't drive in Saudi. They couldn't. It was hard for them to work. Even if they can drive, if they don't feel safe, if there is no Karim that is affordable, you can't participate in the economy. Similarly with payments, take in Pakistan. If I remember the number right, 90% of women in Pakistan, 90% are unbanked. So. The governments are like, if anyone can come and help figure this out at a relatively, you know, they don't have to invest. We'll do it. And, but if we can, this, they, they this, drives, the this weed, drives yeah. economic development, right? So, so uh, same thing in Egypt, you know, on, 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 on the, on the bank. Uh, and we can expect that Karim will stay, right? So the yes. brand, the brand is here. I think as long as we keep performing, we will uh, stay. If we don't do well, then. We'll have to have a conversation with Dara, but as long as we keep performing, we'll be fine. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Magnus. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic. <laughs>